Here we go with Devin Olson's Blowtorch Nymph. And what I've got here in the vise is a Hannock C400 jig hook. It's a 60 degree jig hook, barbless obviously. And I've got a 3 millimeter copper tungsten bead slid on there, and that's a, a slotted bead. I'm going to start off with some 15 thousandths lead wire, and I'm just going to make four turns. And I'll break the ends off there. And then I'm going to take those four turns and push them up against the bead. You want to get your bead situated. Just push them right up against the bead. That's just going to add some additional weight and keep the fly down in the water column. And then I'm going to come in with some Fire Orange 14 knot Vivas thread. And I'm going to start this just behind that lead. And just get a little short jam knot on there. Then I'm going to build a taper going from the the bare hook up to the lead. And you can see this will help to jam the lead up against the bead. It just keeps it from moving around. Once I've got that taper built up, I'm going to run up over the lead and then back again all the way back to the bend. And you have to kind of imagine where the barb would be on this hook to know where to stop, but we want to stop just about even with where the barb would be, about mid, mid spear there. And I'll bring the thread forward again, just up onto the lead, just behind the bead. And for the tail, this is Glow Bright Floss. This is number five, uh, so it's a fire orange color. And I've got three strands. I'm going to catch those three strands and pull them down to length. And I'm going to wrap back over them, keeping them on top of the hook as I go, all the way back to the bend. And I'll just leave those long hanging out there for right now. Now for the ribbing, I'm going to use a piece of Mirage Flashaboo. I'm going to tie this in on my near side of the hook, and since my thread's hanging at the back, I'll just lay this in at an angle on my near side, and I want that tag in to be short of the bead, and I can secure it down as I come forward with the thread. And then I'm going to come in with a piece of 5X tippet material for the rib. And with the tippet material, uh, this is going to be a counter rib, I should say, and the idea of this is to strengthen that, that rib. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to catch this and draw it to the far side of the hook and bind it down in place keeping it along the far side of the hook. Then I'll bring my thread back to about midpoint so I've got both my flash and my rib tied in. Uh, flash is on the near side of the hook, the rib is tied in on the far side of the hook. I'm going to come in with some black peacock eye stub and this is going to be the body and we don't need a bunch. We've, you can see we've already built most of the taper up uh, just with the thread and the lead. So I'm going to take a bit of this black peacock eye stubbing and I want to twist it down tightly just enough to cover the thread about like so and I'm going to work with that bare thread coming back to the bend so that my first turn comes around at the bend and as I come forward I'm going to build just a slightly tapered body right up to the back of the bead and if you've got a few crazy ones sticking out there, you can trim them off. It's really of little consequence, but I find that I just have to do it. And then I'm going to rib through with the tinsel, or the flash. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go over the top in the conventional direction. And I'm going to rib through that body with five or six turns. And I'll tie that flash off with just a turn or two. Get my vise adjusted a little bit here. Then I'm going to pick up my monofilament and I'm going to rib counter rib so that's coming over the top of the hook toward me over that flash and the dubbing for the same five or six turns and I like to kind of pull tight on this just to anchor that down in there and that'll just help to reinforce that flash rib. I'll tie that off with a couple of turns and then I can trim both the tippet material and the flash out. Now for the collar on this, this is really a pretty simple fly as you've seen so far, but on the collar on this there's a couple things to watch out for. And we're going to use a CDC feather. This is just a natural done CDC feather. And what you want to look for is a feather that's got a thin stem here across the center. We're going to wrap this like a hackle. Um, and Devin likes to tie these really sparsely, so he strips one side. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, now in my case, I'm going to tie this feather in by the tip. And in my case, tying left-handed, I want to strip 
Um, if I'm looking at the front of the feather, I want to strip my right side of the feather. Um, I want to strip the inside of the turn, if that's an easier way to put that. So if I hold this up and I've got the, the, in, or the inside of the feather facing you and the outside facing me, I'm going to strip the barbs off my right side so that when I set this up to wrap, that side is going to be what comes up. Now one of the other things you'll run into is the length of these barbs. You can see they're, they're much longer than the hook and that's not, not atypical at all. So what I like to do ahead of time, you can trim them after the fact, but what I like to do ahead of time just to make them a little bit more ragged is kind of get a measurement and I'll clump them up in my fingers and then I just thumbnail them off. So I'm just going to tear those off short. About like so. And again, like I say, I'll, if I need to trim them up a little bit when I'm done, I can still do that. So now I'll prep my feather like so. And I've got a division point here at the tip end. I'm going to spin my thread up a bit. I like to cord the thread right here so that it bites into this stem. And I'll set the feather in on my near side. And I want to anchor it in place with several tight turns of thread. Um, it's very easy to pull this feather out when you go to wrap it. So I really like to get it anchored down. Um, to that end, this little stub that we've got sticking forward here, I'll fold that back and take a couple turns over it as well for the same reason. And then you can come in and actually just trim that center stem out. Don't worry about those few little fibers. So now I'm going to take my hackle pliers and I'm going to grab the butt end of the feather. And I'm just going to make a turn or two. So there's one whole turn and one and a half turns there. And I'll catch that feather over the bare stem there, up right up behind the bead, and really anchor that down tightly. Come in with the very tips of my scissors and trim that feather out. And I'm going to sweep that collar back a bit. And I'm going to build a thread collar. Um, and this thread collar should be should be somewhat prominent. Uh, you want it to stick out. You want it to be, you know, you know, obvious. And then I'll come in with my whip finisher and whip finish right up on the back edge of the bead there, just kind of building that collar up just a bit. Now before I trim the thread, on these slides I like to come in and put a little bit of resin, but one of the problems when you try to use resin straight from the bottle or right, right from the brush is it'll bleed into the CDC. So what I've come up with is this little technique where I'm going to use the thread as the applicator. So I've already whip finished. I'm going to just rub some, some resin over about an inch of thread and you want some when it kind of beat it up on there. Really doesn't take very much. And then I'm going to take that thread that's been wetted and I'm just going to wrap it over that thread collar. And you can see that'll let the, the resin apply to the thread. And then I'll unwind those three or four turns and trim the thread out. Then I can come in with my UV lamp and cook that. And that kept me from getting any of the resin. You can see I've got a nice glossy collar, but it kept me from getting any, any of the resin onto the collar. Uh, so cool little trick, uh, you know, any kind of soft tackle collar that works nicely for. Now to uh, to size up these these hackle fibers, they're a little long still. You can pull them forward and just kind of trim them down a little bit more. You can use your thumbnail. My thumbnail's not working great today, so I'm going to come in. And I, what I don't want to do is come in and trim these all off equal and square. I want to just kind of come in at random lengths, um, just about a hook shank length long, just back to the bend or so and pretty sparse. You can see that's pretty scraggly. And then for the final step, I'm going to take that stub in and just set my scissors up right at the outside of the bend of the hook and trim those off into just a short little brush. And that is Devin Olson's blowtorch. That's the black version. You can tie it in obviously in any color. Uh, purple's a good one. I fished that one a fair bit as well. Uh, but the black version and the purple version um, you know, obviously only limited by dubbing in your imagination. So um, great little fly, super easy, um, fantastic dry dropper fly. I, I'm not much into the Euro nymphing uh, myself. Devin uh, uh, has put on master class with that, but uh, um, I'm not much into the Euro nymphing myself, but uh, fishing this as a, as a dropper under a dry fly has been uh, uh, pretty successful for me. It's a, a small profile fly. It's got good movement. Those hot spots are very attractive to fish um, and it just sinks like a bomb. So. Uh, twist a few up, and I hope it does the trick for you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.